My phone keeps going off. Where's my phone? A lot of people are talking about the SSD though. I wonder what's going on. Heard they use the same NAND technique as the base M2 MacBook Air where the SSD speeds are slower. In the previous gen, they used higher capacity, few NAND chips, and this dropped the read and write speeds about 20 to 30%. Pains me to watch a device get backward upgrades over the generation. Apple, no, 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 no. Don't do this. Don't do this, man. As a creator, dude, I have to spend, <laughs> I have to buy the upgraded M2 MacBook Pro, then I have to go back and buy an M1 Pro. Hello? Yeah, I was wondering if my rent payment can be put as collateral damage. Yeah, this video is sponsored by Nobody, so I actually need to put as much as I can as collateral damage for this video. Okay. Thank you. Of course, the only location they have is DC, bro. I gotta go into the freaking city again. Where am I even gonna get an M1 MacBook Pro by today? Can't go to the Apple store. This thing's like $1,600 itself. It's like $4,000. I need more collateral damage. Dude, and I gotta go to the Apple store, so I have to go take a shower. Oh, because I can't go to the Apple store dressed like this. Oh my God. There is the Apple store. And of course, since this is the city, there is no parking at all. And my pickup time is exactly at 12. So bravo, Apple. And it's raining on top of that. Poor guy. Welcome to the Carnegie Mellon Apple Store, where I need to go pick up a $2,500 laptop. Please get me out of this city. All right, so I picked up the MacBook Pros. This is the M2 Pro MacBook Pro one terabyte. This is the one that is supposedly has the full read and write speeds. Um, this is the one from yesterday's video with the, as you guys can see here, um, this is the M2 MacBook Pro base model that was in yesterday's video. And then I picked up the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, um, 512 gigabytes. I hope this isn't true, but from what people are saying, the 14 inch that came out before the base model SSD speeds are faster than the SSD speeds that are on the base model M2. And they actually match the ones that are on the higher end M2 MacBook Pro 14 inch. If you're lost, trust me, I understand. It's a whole fiasco that honestly shouldn't even exist in the first place. But let me go ahead and get these unboxed. Just to warm up the SSDs a bit, I'm doing a transfer from multiple MacBooks to the new ones. So I'm gonna let this finish and then we can get into the SSD testing. Cross my fingers that I'm wrong. So let's start off with the um, entry level MacBook Pro. Please, please Apple, do not be, don't be doing stuff like this. All right, so we have 4,700 uh, megabits, or my bad, megabytes, don't hurt me in the comments. And this is around 3,000, so uh, I'm not gonna remember that, so let me get a piece of papel. 4,700, and this is around 3,000. The reads are pretty consistent. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and grab the upgraded SSD to a terabyte on the M2 Pro variant of the 14 inch, which would be this guy right here. Also, if you made it this far in this video, please subscribe. I need the ad revenue, ad. It'd be really awkward if there was an ad right there. Anyway, please Apple do not have higher speeds than 4,700. Wow. <laughs> wow, okay, so this is a uh, M2 Pro. Okay, let me let me keep it together. Let me keep it together. All right, so it's not looking good so far, um, but let me get the M1 Pro base model from 
a couple of years ago. It's not looking good, Apple. You are lighting a fuse inside me right now, but I will stay calm until I see the test of this one. Yep, there it is. 6556. 5,000. I just need to think for a second, guys. So we're getting about a 40% decrease in the read speeds and a 28% decrease in the write speeds compared to the upgraded M2 MacBook Pro or the, even the entry-level MacBook Pro 14-inch from last year. And I made a video on this when the M2 first came out. I'm not here to defend Apple and I'm not here to just completely bash Apple. I'm here to pretty much be an objective bystander and criticize them when I can and then also give credit when I can because not everything is just black and white. I always try my best to not watch anything from other tech channels in terms of products that I am interested in to unbox and review on the channel. Why is it that this computer, the Pro, is $100 more than the Air with an older design and it's being handicapped by the chip itself when this is supposed to be marketed towards Pro? Now, devil's advocate, because you always gotta play both sides. Um, I'll have it somewhere on the screen and in the link in the description below if you want to watch it i think you should because i did say a lot of things that were honestly on my mind and i'm gonna say more or less the same thing but probably a little bit more not only for apple but for creators and sponsors as well because this is actually what makes me upset on this platform and not only on youtube but just general consumerism as well so there's only like three real defenses that people can have for Apple for making slower SSDs in their entry models of their product stack, right? First thing people say, which is what I did for the MacBook Airs, which I still defend, is that most people aren't going to notice, which is fair to say. Second one is that it's okay to do, but Apple should disclose it on their website, which once again is fair to say, but I really don't think people are gonna read the disclosure on the website. Three, is probably a business re reason for profit margins. If I'm wrong, someone from Apple can contact me, but those are like the only three real defenses Apple has. And if it's for a business reason to have better profit margins, um, by all means, right? Apple's like the king of profit margins. So, what is different now? Like, why has my mood changed? And it's because I said it's fair to say for the Air models, and that's because of the target audience and the people buying the MacBook Air. It's plenty for what they need, and to be honest, most people who are buying that computer are not gonna notice. However, when it comes to the MacBook Pro, and I was already upset when the MacBook Pro with M2 came out, how it was being handicapped, why is it that Apple has just silently decided that, hey, unless you pay for more storage, we're going to give you 40%, 30% slower speeds on your SSD. And in people's defense, people are gonna say, no one's gonna notice. Although 6,500 uh, megabytes <laughs> writes is actually kind of insane. Going down to 4,700 is still really good, but that doesn't make it okay for you guys, and you guys, meaning Apple, to cut the speeds. The thing that makes me upset with Apple is that this is your professional machine. And I understand there's gonna be some people in the comments that are gonna say, just because it has MacBook Pro in its name doesn't necessarily mean it's for professionals, it's just marketing. However, my counter argument to that is that Apple is marketing this as a professional machine that people are using this. In their keynotes, they have companies saying, hey, we use this on a day-to-day -day basis for our business. And it's not like those businesses are small. They're businesses that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Whenever I go to software conferences, a lot of people are using MacBooks. If you're doing digital creation, you're seeing MacBooks. So if you're marketing this 
for professionals and having your keynotes be experiences on businesses that are using this machine, you can't, co you can't trail back and say, oh, that's just marketing. It's MacBook Pro, it's just in its name. It's not really professional. And this is, this is the next thing that I'm gonna get into that actually makes me upset. And it's this, I don't understand sponsored videos, right? Even though they aren't disclosed that they aren't sponsored, it's already known that the product is given to certain creators early, right? Because if I can't buy the machine and you have it, clearly you got it some way, one way or another, especially when they're all released at the same time. Regardless, my point is, I don't like when companies give creators machines that are maxed out spec or they're just not spec'd out for what 95% of the people are going to buy. And I know these companies have that information on what configurations are that people are buying. So it's almost like false advertising when these creators, I should say top creators are making these videos on um, products and they're saying that this is the most insane machine I've ever used. Look at, the, look at these speeds that I'm getting. And then me as the consumer is like, yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Let me go get the same thing. Let me get the M2 MacBook Pro 14 inch that just came out, base model. Little do I know that instead of getting 6,500 rights, I'm getting handicapped on, on purpose, by the way. It's not like these creators didn't know, it's just that this is that laptop, the one that got spec'd out for them, is the only thing that they know. So then it gets a little interesting because it's like, is it the creator's fault? Is it the sponsor's fault? Is there some disclosure that needs to be made? Because if Apple gave a disclosure to the creators like, hey, we're giving you this spec'd out machine, but just let your audience know that the base model, or if they don't upgrade the memory, SSD, that they're gonna get a machine that's not identical to yours. They're not gonna get the same performance as yours. Make sure you disclose that. Never heard that in any creator's review, ever. It's always a separate video. It's always the video after where the first video is where there's a huge flux of people buying the product. And I know I'm speaking out here, and to be honest, I say my videos aren't sponsored on purpose, but I genuinely think this is probably gonna be a reason why Apple's never gonna sponsor me because I'm saying stuff like this. And to Apple's defense, I'm not just slamming Apple. This, is, this goes for all sponsors. Watch videos on content that just, okay, here's what I'm gonna say. Watch, okay, pay attention to videos that are sponsored or the product is given to them and notice the configuration that they have. Like for Windows laptops, it's like, oh, by the way, this is like a 4K OLED panel, has the RTX 3080 with the i9 processor in it. I get it in the aspect of, hey, we're just trying to showcase, this is the best that we can offer, but how about you show what you can offer for most people that are gonna be buying your product? I get it. At least maybe I don't get it, I don't know. I'm still learning the process of what it takes to be a decent content creator because I don't wanna be cookie cutter like everyone else. So what are my final thoughts on this? And the only thing I really wanna say is I, 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 just, I can't agree with this because I understand once again, like for, going to 6,500 or 4,700 people are not gonna notice. Like in the grand scheme of things, people are not gonna notice. And people's defense, again, is gonna be like, if people actually do a lot of read and write speeds, they're gonna upgrade their uh, SSD or their storage anyway, which is fair. However, once again, for professional machines, and you've done it in the past, which is even more frustrating, is that the entry-level M2 Pro machine doesn't match the entry level speeds of the M1 MacBook Pro. And in order to get those same speeds from years ago, I gotta upgrade the memory to $200, which once again, I really don't even understand why, 
storage upgrades on Apple are so expensive. I don't know. I don't agree with it. For a professional machine where you're advertising and actively marketing that this is used for professionals, it should be the same throughout. For your Air models, your entry-level models, the Airs, it's fine. It's fine. Those target audience people are not going to notice. But if I'm running a business and I have, I don't know, 5,000 employees and I get the entry-level MacBook Pro and I realize that the machine is not the same, doesn't have the same capabilities as if I were to upgrade an extra $200 or the base model that came out a couple years ago, I'd be pissed as a business. But Apple's the only one who makes Mac OS and I don't really have an alternative, so I guess I just gotta suck it up. Anyway guys, that's my thoughts on the SSD issue. I'll have other videos coming out comparing, I don't know, all the other MacBook Pros and the Airs and whatnot. But hopefully you guys found this video informative. I appreciate every single sub, like, and comment. Let me know what you guys think about this whole situation. And as always, guys, much love. Also, I know my mom's gonna text me, like, please don't make videos like this. I don't like it when you're upset, but if I don't say it, nobody's gonna say it, and I gotta stay true to myself. Apple is... <sighs> Apple does good stuff, but they also do stuff that makes me mad. That's all I can say. Have a nice day, guys.